the white army is blessed to have dr kishan rao sir as our teacher and mentor today welcome to you sir thank you mr ravi bashar from ucms nepal medical college uh, has volunteered to present a case today of appendicitis welcome to you namaste also welcome to all the active members to this session with the permission of our mentor today let's begin the presentation yeah we are good to go Okay. Hello, hello everyone. I am Ravi Vasya from Universal College of Medical Science, Nepal. Uh, thank you, Kishan Rao sir, for giving me all the opportunity to present the case in front of all uh, Nepal and medical experience. And this is a golden opportunity for all of us. So, with with your consent, sir, may I proceed? Please, please. So now I will proceed with my history. Uh, Mr. Sowai, a 28-year Hindu lady, housewife by occupation, residents of Putol, Nepal, as presented to emergency department at 10 p.m. with chief complaint of pain abdomen for two days, fever for one day, and vomiting for one day. My history of presenting illness is my patient was apparently well before two days back, and he presented with pain abdomen. Pain was sudden in onset. It started at around 6 a.m. this day, initially around umbilicus, but has become more localized on the right lower abdomen at the moment. Piercing in character and continuous. No any relieving and aggravating factor was noted. No any particular relation to food and timing was noted. Severe enough to disrupt our regular activities. See also complaints of rise in body temperature since last day which is starting in onset around 101 degree for a night with no chills and rigor, but with sweating. No any particular relation with timing was noted. Temperature decrease, decreases of to 99 degree for a night upon taking paracetamol from local shop, but fever comes back again. Uh, this was accompanied by three to four episodes of non-projectile vomiting, initially containing undigested food particles, later watery. About one cup full each time more than 250 ml in one episode, non bilious, non, non blood stain, and non full smelling. Upon further action, she denies trauma to abdomen and it change in bowel moment, blood in stool. And there was no history of abdominal distension, passage of stool and flatulence, blood in stool and diarrhea, nocturnal cough, chest pain, palpitation. Uh, there was no history of loss of consciousness and abnormal body movement. There was no history of burning situation and no history of pain during menstruation, no PV discharge. And my menstrual history is, she is currently on our mid-cycle of our menses. Our menses are regular with menstrual flow. Please proceed. Finish of the history. Okay, sir. This one, this one. Uh, okay, sir. And... The family history, and my, yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Past history. No similar illness in the past. She is non diabetic, non hypertensive, no previous history of asthma, no any thyroid disease. She hasn't had any previous surgeries. Now, proceeding with personal history, she denies any ethanol consumption and smoking. No uh, past history of blood transfusion, tattooing, piercing. She consumes mixed diet and she is sexually active. Her bowel and bladder habit have been normal previously. Normal sleep pattern, no addiction. In family history, no history of similar complaints in the family. No history of colorectal pancreatic cancer in the family. Uh, this is the uh, tree family tree. A socioeconomic history. She belongs to upper middle class family according to Kupu Swami grading. She lives in a two-story house with separate bathroom and kitchen. They are using LPG gas for cooking and use filter and water for drinking. With this, I have completed my history. Uh, drug and allergic history, sorry, sir. She has taken paracetamol uh, for her fever. Otherwise, she is not on any medication. She has no any known allergy. Yes, okay, sir. With this, I have completed my summary, history. Yeah, go with the summary. That's important. Okay, sir. Last slide is okay. important. Uh, Mistress uh, X, 28-year-old female, presented to emergency with chief complaint of pain abdomen, fever, and vomiting. Pain abdomen is starting from umbilicus and migrating to right iliac fossa. Fever was of low-grade type, continuous, and relieve on medication, with no chills and rigor. 
vomiting was non bilious non projectile contains food particle no history of passage of flatulence in stool she is non smoker doesn't have a history of consuming ethanol she is a mid cycle of hormones and sexually active okay so what's your provisional diagnosis what do you have written with this my provisional, uh, my provisional diagnosis my provisional diagnosis is acute appendicitis sir how 28 years age related to appendicitis i want to uh it may be different from is like the appendicitis may be uh, uh maximally present in uh, young adults sir very good okay and yeah it can be it's more common in this reproductive age group okay yes, in sir. 20 in pregnancy it may be group in the pregnancy uh, it's very common and it's more common in uh, ladies and it's uh, okay it's more common in whites okay all these racial factors all these risk factors are there some of the risk factors and also we have to keep this in when uh, she is a 28 year old lady we have so many differential diagnoses in mind we have to rule out yes, right sir. what are the differential yes, diagnoses we have uh, when a lady of 20 years old comes with a right iliac fossa pain sir uh, she is female so the differential diagnosis might be uh, ruptured ectopic uh, ruptured ectopic pregnancy Okay. Rops are ovarian follicle. Very good. Uh, there might be called, uh, tube. What called you already tube. mentioned? Yeah, I'm yes, suspecting sir. that only. That can be. It can. It could be just ruptured a uh, uh, follicle. What is that called? That condition is called. Rops are follicle is called. Uh, She's having pain in the. You mentioned that in your presentation also. She is in the yes, uh, having sir. a mid cycle. Yes, sir. In the mid cycle, typically ladies get one pain. What is that called? ovulatory pain because of the rupture of the follicle that's called mittel mers pain mittel mers pain ah uh, yes sir yes sir mers that's why i liked your presentation because you have nicely taken the menstrual history see most of the miss this history menstrual history okay with one history we can diagnose many things okay what other things a 28 year old lady uh, there might be tb over in excess as well sir okay and uh, there might be right uh, uh, ureteric colic very good wonderful and, uh, uh, and acute pyelonephritis might be there okay. and uh, might okay. be so what, what if that uh, patient was uh, uh, like say 2 years old what you would have suspected what other things at the level uh, of yes, history sir. i i may i may suspect about mycal diverticulitis wonderful next and uh, next i may suspect about acute typhal uh, typhoiditis sir typhoiditis typhoiditis yes. very good Yes, Then sir. most common lymph nodes. What is that called? Uh, yes, sir. Acute uh, mesenteric lymphadenitis. Lymphadenitis. Very good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, intersubsection. Yes, acute. Yes, sir. Intersubsection. Okay, if a uh, no instead of twenty-eight, eighty-two year old uh, gentleman comes to you, elderly male, then what will yes, suspect? Sir. With the similar complaints. Uh, I may suspect about. Uh, sir, peptic ulcer perforation might be there, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Very good. That's uh, uh, sir, uh, that's called uh, you know peptic ulcer perforation. Typically, good that you brought it out. Yes, Typically, sir. Typically, pain is there uh, seen in epigastric region, peptic yes, ulcer sir. perforation. But sometimes, yes, well, like you uh, rightly said, it can mimic the pain can mimic in right iliac fossa. That's called Valentine yes, syndrome. Sir. Please yes, note sir. it down. This is a favorite yes, Viva question. it's called valentines syndrome a great uh, uh, person was there it's called mr valentine he was died because of misdiagnosis he had uh, this thing uh, acute perforation of the ulcer but he was misdiagnosed as appendicitis because he had pain in the right iliac fossa so it's called valentine syndrome remember this another thing crohn's disease you know crohn's disease that can also yes, involve the appendix and cause right iliac fossa pain in the elderly so these are the differentials in different age groups we can have so age is very very what other uh, possibilities possible symptoms in uh, case of appendicitis sir there might be anorexia very good very good and if the appendix is uh, pel 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 if the appendix anatomy is uh, near to pel pelvic area then there what might be that? diarrhea very there good. might be diarrhea and there might be question the bladder well. yes persistent bladder as well sir and frequency uh, increase fre uh, uh, called frequency means increased micturition okay yes sir uh, yes, we sir. don't say increased frequency it's just frequency of bladder yes, okay then yes, what sir. else 
Uh, there might be full smelling as well, sir. Okay. Usually there will be constipation, but yeah, like you said, uh, there is a pelvic uh, appendicitis is there, then they may have diarrhea and uh, like you said, uh, frequency, anorexia, uh, loss of uh, appetite, all those things will be there. Now, tell me what is Murphy's triad? Murphy's triad means the, there is uh, three component in that we yep. can see pain, abdomen, pain, vomiting and fever. Yeah, in that order only, that's important. Appendicitis, yes, sir. that's why I asked. In that order we get, first we get the pain. Where's typically pain is seen in, uh, in the beginning, Ravi? In the right umbilicus region, sir. In the, around the umbilicus, okay? Yes, sir. And then slowly it migrates towards the right iliac right. fossa. That's yes, called sir. migrating type of pain. There are so many types, see, radiating type of pain, referred pain, Okay, so this is a migrate typically seen in acute appendicitis. You know the reason why it's get. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Please so tell for the benefit of others. Okay, sir. Sir, every medical derivative will have pain at uh, umbilicus. Hmm. And uh, initially, the umbilicus pain. is supplied. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, initially, there is a bilateral nerve innervation at the umbilicus. So initially, there will be pain at the umbilicus, but uh, at the right iliac fossa, when the appendix get obstructed or inflamed then what happens the appendix gets swollen and it will toss the parietal peritoneum Perfect. and parietal peritoneum is uh, supplied by somatic nerve supply so it okay. will carry pain and the pain will be more severe on the right iliac fossa wonderful 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 explanation so that is somatic pain okay but that's somatic pain initially there will be visceral pain around the uh, umbilicus slowly as the inflammation get localized uh, the body tries to localize the pain and then the somatic pain is seen uh, what uh, felt near the right iliac fossa. Okay, that's a typical point where you elicit the pain or tenderness. What is that called? Pointing point. It's pointing sign, sir. That's pointing sign. Yeah, ask the patient to point one. He, she will point out. What is that point called? Name of that? McBurney point, sir. McBurney's. Where is that uh, landmark for McBurney's point? Uh, in my uh, 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 lateral one third from the umbilicus and medial two third from the anterior superior iliac spine. Ulta, lateral two third and uh, yes, from sir. the umbilicus and uh, uh, one third from the uh, ASIS. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Two third from the umbilicus and one third from the uh, ASIS. Okay. So, first is pain. After that is vomiting. Second thing to yes, come sir. is, according to Murphy's, it's vomiting. Why there will be vomiting in case of appendicitis? Due to reflux, it flex spasm, sir. What do you understand by that? Uh, means uh, our GI system uh... pylorospasm. Okay, pylorus. Of yes, Get... yes, okay. hmm. yes, sir. Yes, sir. That means. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, tell me. Uh, yes, sir. Our GI system has one, one way direction. That means uh, the food pass from one, one way direction. And then when the food contain or bowel get obstructed, then due to reflex spasm, the, there, there might be a vomiting. Your understanding is good. So third, third component is in the symptomatology is the fever. Okay, it will takes time yes, 24 to 48 hours to set in that uh, inflammation process to this thing. And uh, then finally, that uh, fever is becomes evident. Okay, so third component. So we can reverse the order. Okay, pain, vomiting. Yeah, both are one day. I agree. In that first, which one first? You should write that. You should ask the patient again. Huh? First you had the fever or vomiting? Fever or vomiting? Okay. Differentiate it, mild, moderate, and severe pain. Mild is, if you can do our daily activities like usual, then it's called mild pain. If it's restricting our daily activities, then moderate pain. If you are not at all able to do our daily activities, then it's called severe pain. That's the subjective quantification of the severity of the pain. Next is projectile vomiting and non-projectile vomiting. Uh, projectile means uh, uh, if the uh, vomitors are... It doesn't toss the clothes, doesn't stain the clothes, then that is called projectile vomiting. If the uh, uh, if the okay. vomit, this vomitus toss the body. Hmm. Where do we get this projectile vomiting type of vomiting? What condition? Uh, in, in the case like meningitis, sir. Very good. In increased intracranial pressure or tension. Okay. And uh, okay, vomiting is non bilious, non blood stain, non foul smelling. Okay. Because it was just from the because of the pylorus spasm, only stomach content will come out. Okay. So why did you ask for trauma to abdomen? Because trauma is the main cause for this yes. thing, sir. So I have. Okay, but uh, what do you want to really rule out? Here there are not just pain. 
pain is there fever is there and vomiting is there why did you ask for trauma trauma um, what sir, what other things you can organ injury sir to rule out yeah. organ injury like Good. Spilic, spilic, and some fever. infection like abscess would have been formed now there okay trauma and infection abscess which might have be causing no fever pain and along with that uh, again visceral injury will cause vomiting reflex okay that you wanted to rule out very good and any change in bowel movement why did you ask uh, sir sometime of uh, uh, because after obstruction or something else after inflammation the bowel movement may uh, sometime rise decrease. or sometime decrease okay. so i blood I in stool what did you ask for blood in stool so um, uh, to rule out other uh, if there is any uh, condition like uh, hemorrhoids or something else sir mm -hmm. anything related here like uh, you can uh, suspect anything here related appendicitis or something around there only crohn's disease yes sir i i may suspect about crohn's disease sir okay like that you can you just want to rule out that all those things so you ask this negative histories you ask leading questions and rule out one one by see when a when a 28 year old lady comes to you with uh, these complaints pain fever and uh, uh, what uh, vomiting you have vomiting. certain differentials in your mind some five six differentials in your mind okay like uh, tube ovarian related and uh, you already mentioned all this dvs so now what you want is in the history of presenting illness you ask one one question so that one one by one your differential will be ruled out see uh, we ruled out already uh, the urinary calculus how did you rule out uh, with the help of uh, that no pain. pain what type pain of pain is yeah. there it was continuous it's type of pain but in uh, calculus it will be intermittent type of or polyky type of pain will be there uh, we you asked about the bladder habits there is no burning micturition or uh, here so uh, most probably this uh, calculus is ruled out okay so one by one we will be ruling out one by in the process of history taking clear yes. yeah next slide okay why did you ask for thing. abdominal distension uh, so there might be large bowel obstruction might be there so to rule out those thing i have asked about abdominal distension okay passage of stool and flatulence uh, if there is obstruction then there might not be passage of the stools and flatulence so to rule what out is large what is that called what is that called uh not passing yes, uh, not passing stools and flatulence that's called not passing stool is called constipation not yes, passing sir. stool and uh, along with the flatulence obstipation very good so obstipation yes, okay next uh, uh, nocturnal cough chest pain and palpitation yes. sir to rule out the disease like gerd uh, and uh, chest uh, so does gerd present with vomiting fever and pain in the right iliac fossa no sir okay then not required only which are the conditions present to you with pain fever and right iliac fossa uh, this thing only those things you need to rule out not all the condition you need not rule out here clear yes sir okay okay next burning micturition okay i understand loss of consciousness and abnormal body movements why Uh, sir there might be meningococcus enterocolitis so i have uh, asked okay enterocolitis very good that's also on dds very good so no history of pain during menstruation okay it could be dysmenorrhea also okay so you wanted to rule out that menstrual history she is having on her mid uh, cycle of her menses but how will you differentiate between middlemers pain and uh, this uh, appendicitis pain on this history she is telling it's a 14 day of my cycle in mid cycle okay yes, then sir. you will have only the pain okay she will have pain on both the sides not just one side okay then second thing is there will be mild rise of temperature will be there during ovulation but if the, only if there is a severe uh, pain is there only visceral irritation is there only then there will be vomiting not otherwise okay and the pain will subside in maximum one day it will last only for one or maximum two day it will not continue like this middle mers pain that's how you can rule out middle mers pain from the appendicitis pain okay and then coming to the uh, examination we can confirm 
in uh, examination there is no tenderness in case of middle mars pain only there will be pain hope you know the difference between pain and tenderness yes sir okay next next slide a uh, past history why did you ask a similar illness in the past um, because the appendix site is maybe recurrent as well uh, to right. rule out other disease like uh, recurrent what is the most disease? common organism what is the most common cause most common cause for appendicitis sir yeah yeah isseria coli streptococcus okay, organism organism agree before that what is the most common cause the cause sir fecolith very good very good there is obstruction to the lumen yes sir so there will be the whatever the natural flora is there they'll get multiplied and like e coli and this thing other bacteria then they cause uh, inflammation okay good so pathophysiology theory part you will read by yourself okay how does that uh, uh, patho pathogenesis of appendicitis all those things uh, theory part we will not discuss we will discuss only the uh, practical aspects so why why all this important non diabetic non hypertensive uh, asthma and all so sometimes the diabetic abdomen may present with this symptom as well to rule out this thing i have asked about a diabetic history and uh in hypertensive uh, i have to rule out to rule out the oh, diabetic uh, ketoacidosis in diabetic ketoacidosis yes, they'll have this okay yes, uh, pain of the men and vomiting all those things okay then and, more importantly uh, to, okay 28 year old unlike type 1 diabetes it's unlikely uh, to have a diabetes yes, mellitus what the other significance of knowing this comorbidities sir it sometimes there might be abdominal aneurysm in 28 year old female So when the rupture, uh, abdomen uh, aneurysm may rupture, then this rupture. might be a clinical presentation. So okay, to rule out good. this thing, I have asked about this thing. And more than that, more than that, okay, you have ruled out everything. It's important for the management also, right? Yes, sir. It's important yes, for yes, management sir. also. Huh? The prognosis is different. Okay, uh, you are a diabetic patient. You are operating for appendicectomy, and a non-diabetic patient, you are operating for the uh, uh, appendi appendicitis. both are different right hope you know what is the yeah the healing I, process I, the immunity yes, I, i'll teach you i'll teach you at the end when the surgery part comes but you should know what are the comorbidities see if a diabetic patient is there you can't give some certain iv fluids you can't give dextrose fluids because already she is high on sugars okay so you should be careful there will be some drug interaction between the diabetic anti diabetics and uh, the other drugs you will be prescribing so you should be careful before prescribing second thing third thing uh, like uh, yeah you you should be aware she is uh, diabetic so her immunity levels are low so if i do some surgery healing will be retarded so options while doing surgery i should optimize her sugar levels before doing the surgery all those things you should keep in mind okay that's why all this for example you are not taken the history properly okay patient is uh, for example say uh, uh, epileptic epileptic and you are not taken the history what happens you have taken the patient up for surgery in the operative table she will start convulsing start convulsions you don't know what's happening you unnecessary panic instead if you know that she is uh, having epileptic disorder then she, you will take all the uh, all the precautions you will give anti epileptic before the surgery and uh, while the, during the surgery also you will monitor properly got my point so yes, you sir. should know the all these comorbidities beforehand so next a personal history hmm. ethanol consumption and smoking okay good and uh, blood tattooing piercing okay consume mixed diet habit have been normal previously normal sleep pattern no addiction but uh, now yeah now sleep pattern is normal now uh, now no sir now she uh, she is our sleep pattern is severe pain severe pain yes, or sir. sleep might have altered okay even the uh, appetite appetite would have been decreased now okay you yes, can you can write about the appetite also appetite is decreased most uh, in most of the patients next next slide a family history why family history is important in appendicitis uh, sometimes there might be a case of genetic or some to rule out other diseases like uh, uh, colorectal or pancreatic cancer i have asked about family Very history good. sir yeah even like you rightly said nearly 30% chances having familial uh, very uh, child is having uh, appendicitis means unlikely they most likely to have 
family history first degree relatives in the family having appendicitis that's more common we see you know any uh, seasonal variations in uh, uh, appendicitis in re- rainy season the condition yeah. might be increased in, uh, between may to august we get lot of appendicitis cases may to jo- august that uh, during that time okay so that's also matters so next after family history okay good you have to perfect see your undergraduate presentation should be like this you have to put a flow chart or family tree like this and you should mention if anyone in the uh, first degree relatives affected if not for this other like for example in pediatrics you will be presenting nephrotic syndrome and other kind of like ca carcinoma stomach which are have high predisposition for genetic predisposition in such things this uh, uh, family tree are very important and significant it will have a more impression uh, impressive and impactful for the examiners if you put like this very good really appreciate it nice next but yeah i just want to give suggestion ravi summary will not yes, be sir. this uh, uh, elaborative okay you will just all the things you need not mention here okay again you need not explain all everything about the fever everything about the uh, uh, this thing no you will just write uh, even the name is also not required here when age is important agree 28 year old lady presented the with uh, chief complaint all those things not required present emergency are not required 28 year old lady presented with pain abdomen and uh, for two days and fever and vomiting for one day okay and uh, that much is enough more than enough okay and any significant any other history positive history you can mention any positive history or family like uh, family history or anything or comorbidities are there that you can mention all the no omitting fully explained all those things in detail not required got my point huh yes sir so these complaints only we can make out the provisional diagnosis okay pain uh, comes with a pain of the men severe uh, omitting and uh, fever so my uh, most probably the my at the uh, level of history my diagnosis is acute appendicitis appendicitis i also want to rule out some conditions like uh, uh, you know uh, acute ovarian diseases meckel's diverticulitis or uh, lim- mesenteric lymphadenitis or some just tell some differentials which are specific in this age or for this condition then can i proceed for the examination sir i just you can will ask the examiner sir shall i proceed for the examination yes please i'll tell then you go to the examination please Okay, sir. So may I proceed for the examination? Please, please. Okay, sir. The general examination. Before examination, she was lying supine on bed, and I proceed with consent from her. With my family, a female attendant is nurse. She was looking toxic with her. And one more important thing is uh, exposure. You mentioned adequate exposure should be there. Yes, sir. From where to where you exposed the patient, and a good adequate. Uh-huh. light light also important so for some findings you might have missed you could do it in a dark end also these are the four things we usually mention one most important thing is consent consent and second thing is position third thing is uh, attendant if for a female uh, uh, this thing exposure okay fifth thing is uh, proper lighting okay good next she was looking toxic with her hand over the or abdomen and looks to be in discomfort she is cooperative conscious and well oriented to time place and person she is thin built with an bmi of 21 mm. she has an iv cannula of 21 goes on her right wrist other equipment seen was a, a pulse oximeter connected to a monitor next okay sir and vitals a pulse uh, measures uh, pulse was 108 bit per minute regular normal in volume taken in right in right radial artery no radio radial delay no radio femoral delay this uh, the condition of the atrial wall appears norm- normal on pp bp was uh, found to be 120 by 80 mm of hg uh, on both arms uh, taken in supine position respiratory rate 20 counts per minute which uh, the respiration was thoraco abdominal and was regular temperature was noted to be 101 uh, on degree fahrenheit on right axilla The saturation of the oxygen was 98% without any supplement oxygen and jpp is not elevated very good so what's your inference from the vitals what is your inference 
Uh, so pulse uh, sees in pain, so the pulse is increase uh, increase in uh, hey, increases. Sound. It's having tachycardia. Uh, tachycardia, yes, sir. Okay, because that's maybe because of pain. You're right, absolutely right. Because having severe pain, she's having tachycardia. Then uh, the temperature is slightly high, sir. It is a low grade type. Okay, okay. that what do you say? Uh, low grade means in fever. Okay, high grade fever. Yes, sir, fever. Mm-hmm. And yes, what do you sir. expect the uh, BP to be? BP to be uh, around uh, might be uh, decreases sir for tear. She she has normal BP. Okay, and uh, saturation. Saturation is ninety eight percent. And so okay. I with think... room air, you can tell instead of writing without any supplemental oxygen, you can just in room air ninety eight percent. With oxygen, we can write hundred percent whatever. Okay. Okay. So JVP is not you need not mention JV because uh, you are not suspecting some heart failure or any cardiac uh, condition here. Right, okay. Even not even lung condition also. So not. Uh, more more importantly, what you should have written is in a GI case, hydration you could have written. Sir, I have uh, written that. I have written that, okay. sir. Ah, uh, you could have written. No, I'm telling. It's not a wrong. Yes, sir. She is not having any diarrhea and all. It's more not so important. But you instead you can in a GI case you can write hydration, pulse, BP, respiration, uh, temperature, saturation, and uh, next thing is hydration. Okay, good. Next. Okay, sir. Uh, head to toe examination on head and neck examination or tongue appear dry, appears dry. No any other abnormalities seen on chest. No any external abnormalities seen. And on abdomen, decreased movements seen on right iliac fossa, pelvis, limbs, and back. No any abnormality detected. No sign of suggestive of pallor, icterus, and cyanosis. No lymph node well palpable. Uh, no sign of coilo, no no sign of clubbing of finger was seen. No sign of edema and dehydration. But there was dehydration, sir. My... Okay. 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 For abdominal examination, inspection, on inspection, abdominal flat, umbilicus central inverted, no any visible scar mark, venous prominence, dis- uh, no any visible scar mark, no any venous prominence, no any discoloration, no any visible pulsation and peristalsis. All co- all quadrant except right iliac fossa are moving equally with respiration. On asking patient to show where the pain is present, she points at her right iliac fossa. Very which is also called as pointing sign. Pointing sign. Okay. So now, yes, what is what do you mean by abdomen is flat? How did tell? Abdomen is flat. Oh. How do you say abdomen, abdomen is flat? Yes, sir. It's uh, like uh, you got my point, no? Simple question. Yes, sir. Okay. I have. Yes, sir. Yeah. How do you say? I say this is scaphoid abdomen. Yes, you sir. You say it is. You say it is a flat abdomen. Or uh, uh, one more friend, your friend may say it. No, no, it's distended. So it's subjective yes, again. How do you objectively measure it's a flat abdomen or distended or from here? Now only you should start doing all those things. That's why I'm telling this. Take a scale or a book. Okay. For example, you take a book or a scale and keep it over two bony prominences. One over the sternum above and below or pubic symphysis. This book should, the both ends should touch the two bony prominences, sternum and the uh, Ziphoid process, that is Ziphoid process and the pubic symphysis. Now, what happens if you keep like this? If the entire abdomen, abdominal surface, if touches the book, then it's called flat abdomen. You can imagine, no, what I'm telling. Ravi, yes, sir. I'm, yes, sir. I'm imagining. Yes, if sir. only the end points are touching the book, but the middle abdominal surface is not touching. See, like this. Abdomen is like this. Can you see? Only at the ends, it's touching. Then it's scaphoid abdomen. Yes, sir. If only the central part of the abdomen is touching like this, the book, the ends are not touching the book. That means the abdomen is distended. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'll demonstrate you. You know, on a patient, some other day, I'll demonstrate. You. Okay. Then we, it will be more clear. So why there was a decreased, what do you say? Uh, what do you say, decreased uh, uh, with respiration, movement with respiration. Yes, sir. Th- because the inflammation process is, is, is going over there, so there is slightly decrease with respiration. Okay, that's how. See, in inspection only, we can make out which 
uh, quadrant or which region is involved very good uh, uh, finding okay what is silent abdomen silent means uh, no, no, no. completely what this silent or inspection it is silent not on yes sir auscultation uh, so uh, not moving with the respiration perfect perfect oh. most of the students uh, tell this wrongly you got it right so entire abdomen is not moving at all patient is lying still patient is toxic and he is lying still he is not moving his abdomen at all he is tachypneic he is taking very shallow shallow breaths why uh, due to sometimes this is like paralytic ileus or something if there is no, no, ultra, peritonitis is total it's peritonitis, peritonitis. Yes, generalized yes, peritonitis yes, sir, sir. see here yes, the inflammation sir. involves the only one region right iliac fossa if the entire abdomen is involved then what will happen the entire abdomen will become patient will not move the abdomen voluntarily because it will cause him pain if he moves it will irritate the visceral uh, this thing and it will cause pain okay so he will keep it still try to keep it still okay that's called you know hope you know the difference between guarding and rigidity okay y- yes sir you will read and tell me what's the difference between guarding and rigidity okay on de- yes, definition sir. also next on palpation uh, superficial palpation on superficial palpation slight temperature rise noted on right iliac fossa in comparison to right other area no tenderness on superficial palpation yeah. on deep palpation palpation started from left iliac fossa very good uh, tenderness elicited over right iliac fossa rebound tenderness present no any solid organ palpable hmm so uh, the, okay what you, the method you did was correct first you will ask the patient where is she is having the pain and you will come from the opposite side uh, uh, how to yeah you should be looking at the uh, uh, patient's expressions along with that what you will be observing breathing okay okay when she is taking deep breath you will move when she is expiring or what say when is exhaling will feel for anything you touching or any tenderness is there you will t- feel when she is exhaling when she is inspiring you will just move the, your uh, fingers 1 one, fin- one cm or 1 cm in all the directions is it clear so three things and fourth thing is you should be continuously talking to the patient and trying to distract her otherwise she will become very conscious about what you are doing and she may try to guard so four things in palpation one thing is you should be moving uh, you should be looking at the patient you should be continuously talking and di- try to distract her third thing is you should look at her respiratory pattern and fourth thing is you should move from the opposite side of the uh, pain to the all the regions in all the regions at the end you will come to the where she is having pain so four five things at a time so this requires lot of practice right mr you can't do directly yes. on the exam day or on uh, in front of others directly you need to practice so what i suggest my juniors is always practice on your friends first in your roommates or in your family members instead of directly doing on patients please try it on your relatives or friends first they'll tell you when you do it on friends they'll tell you see you are not observing you are not uh, doing this they can correct you then you can go and do it on the patients okay so palpation is very very important what is this rebound tenderness uh, sir when the uh, uh, when the, while palpating the uh, any area then when we lift what happens there will be pain Uh, when we put our end back now what is that called what that sign called one uh. blumberg sign okay sir blumberg sign what is that blumberg there are so many signs in uh, appendicitis i you, i'm not very fond of these signs and tests and all but these are these are the questions asked in your entrance exams so i'm preparing for that also okay uh, okay sir you need not know all those things if you know how to elicit that's more than enough for me okay as examiner but this name and signs are always important for your examination so if you do the same thing if you get the pain in the left side when you press the left side what is that called left eye left fossa when you yes, get press there you get pain in the right eye left fossa what is that, that called that is called rosing sign sir rosing sign oh. okay. why is that you know okay yes sir why is rosing sign okay so okay i have all the features and i have pain in the left iliac fossa can it be still appendicitis 
I have pain in pain like all typical. Uh, first, it was around umbilicus, then slowly migrated to left iliac fossa, and um, uh, pointing sign is there. Patient is pointing towards uh, left iliac fossa, and same fever. Uh, this uh, vomiting, everything is there. Can it be still appendicitis? No, sir. Why? Uh, we have to look for any inf uh, inflammatory sign, and if everything is there. Uh, and yes, I have pain in the right hypochondrium. Same, okay. everything same features. Yes, but I have pain in the right right hypochondrium instead of right iliac fossa. Is it possible? Hypoch in yeah. hypochondrium region, sir. Yeah. Can it be appendicitis? Yes, sir. If the, there is peritonitis, then that might be there. Yeah. No, 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 no. No peritonitis. It's simple appendicitis. There's something called situs inversus, which is sometimes physiological. Yes, there's no pathology. There is no symptoms will be there. Nothing will be there. Entire our viscera will be opposite to uh, in the heart will be towards the right. There will be dextrocardia. Liver will be on yes, the sir. left side. Gallbladder will be on the left side. Spleen will be on the right side. So so the appendix will be on the which side? In the left side, sir. Yeah. So we can if there is get inflammation, we can have, right? Is it possible, right? Yes, sir. Second thing is malrotation. This uh, embryology has studied uh, what the, how the, the gut rotation, rotations of gut. So if there is a malrotation, sometimes the appendix can be higher up. There is, it's no descended down to the right iliac fossa. It is there in the right hypochondrium only. It has got stuck in the right hypochondrium. So it can be pain, can be there in the, uh, the there is, it's called subhepatic appendix. Yes, sir. Okay. So even in right iliac fossa, or so right hypochondrium also, it could be appendicitis sometimes. Need not be always cholecystitis. But my point. Yes, huh? sir. Yeah. Yes, so sir. Uh, be like your uh, thinking process should be wide and clear. All these embryo because anatomical variations, embryolog embryological problems are very common. Very common. Okay. So we should be uh, having a thought about this also when you, before doing the diagnosis. So next. On percussion, uh, reasoning sound on percussion throughout the abdomen. Hmm. Percussion okay. tenderness over tight iliac fossa. Okay. So I'll not all those two asking, okay, uh, where is this dullness was there, liver dullness, clinic dullness. Uh, okay, all those things you should mention. That's okay. okay. I'll not find uh, all those things. Auscultation, bubble sounds, heard. Three to four. Yeah. Okay. Four okay. Fine. Next. System obstruction. If there is a bubble obstruction, what kind of a bowel sounds you'll hear? Bowel obstruction means there might be uh, bubble obstruction means resonant sound can be also. No, no, there will be what type of bubble sounds you hear? Exaggerated yeah. peristalsis will be there to overcome the obstruction. Then what type of exaggerated sounds will be there? Bubble sound. They are called borborogni sounds. Borborogni. Yes, sir. See, denied, sir. For that, like that okay, for you, see, see, for undergraduates, you can just write correctile examination, not done. But you should mention in your case history, you should write the subheading as correctile examination. But you can, not done, you can write. It's understood. For your, uh, at your level, we don't, ex nobody will expect you to do all those things. Okay. But you should know that any gen, what a uh, per abdomen examination is incomplete. And, and even you can be failed for that without doing a parrectal examination. Any parabdon examination is in, it's written in Bailey. I'm not telling. It's written in Bailey that uh, parabdon uh, par examination is incomplete without doing parrectal examination. So what you should do is undergraduates write the side heading as parrectal examination and please write not done or you can write like this patient denied parrectal examination. Very good. Next CVS is fine. Uh, uh, respiratory oh, is fine. Yes sir. And the CNS is fine. Okay, next. With this, I have completed my history, sir. Okay. Now, you can tell the summary. examination summary. Okay, sir. Here you can write, yeah, uh, briefly from the summary, uh, from the history, again from the examination. What are the salient features in favor of your okay. diagnosis? You can tell in the summary. Please tell. Okay, okay, sir. A mistress Thapa, a 28-year-old lady, presented to emergency with complaint of right lower abdominal pain, which was initially periomelical, fever of 
101 degree Fahrenheit, multiple episode of vomiting, or systemic or system review from history doesn't reveal any abnormality. Other component of history are unremarkable. On examination, she appears distress, tachycardia, with a pulse rate of 108 beat per minute. Normal tension, breathing normally, or saturation is 98 percent. Or tongue appears dry and decreased movement with respiration seen on right iliac fossa. Head to toe examination is otherwise unremarkable. On inspection, or right iliac fossa shows decreased movement with respiration. On palpation, raised temperature noted on right iliac fossa with tenderness and read rebound tenderness present. On percussion, tenderness was elicited over right iliac fossa. Or bowel sound were hot during auscultation of the abdomen. She denied poor rectal examination. Review of cardiovascular, respiratory, and nervous system revealed no abnormality. So, okay, next. What's the provisional diagnosis? After the summary, you should write a slide. Okay, before you know, you should yes, write sir. a separate slide or a separate in the case sheet. That provisional diagnosis. Okay. Or just my yes, provisional sir. diagnosis at the end of history and examination is you should write one exam, one the possible diagnosis, clinical diagnosis. What you will write here? Acute appendicitis, sir. Okay, it's a case of acute appendicitis. Now, what you will do? If you have doubts, then you will write another slide called differential diagnosis. See, I'm sure that it is acute appendicitis, but it could be also this, this, this. One, two, three. You have any differential like that? That differentials should uh, what uh, cover all the features this patient is having very close. Like already already mentioned, in this age group, what are the possibilities? In this age group, sir. Yeah. Uh, in age group, uh, pelvic inflammatory disease might be there, sir. Very good. And, PID. Uh, okay. Uh, ectopic pregnancy. Is she married? Uh, no married, sir. But she has recent okay. sexual issues. Okay. Contact issue. Oh, okay. Ectopic uh, pregnancy. Might, yes, sir. Uh, lots of then, follicular cyst might be there. Okay. And acute appendicitis itself. Uh, okay, good. Uh, differential. And yes, sir, one of uh, acute porphyry might be there, sir. Porphyry, other systemic features will be there. Okay. Other yes, systemic sir. features will be there. Nothing is there. Porphyry is not there. Other anything, because tenderness is there. Okay. What are like, like, sir, tiflitis can be there. Yes, sir, acute tiflitis might be there. Again, it is very uncommon at this stage, but even can, that can be. There's some that's called. Uh, a nurse's disease, uh, she can still have adenitis, okay? And um, um, uh, yeah, some even the Meckel's diverticulum can be there. Yes, they sir. can perform very late. Okay, if there's a wide uh, mouth uh, Meckel's diverticulum is there, they can present a bit late uh, onset. So even the Meckel's is a very good uh, differential diagnosis here. Okay, so we all, you, you can mention these in the differential diagnosis. Okay, after this, uh, okay, uh, so what are the, I'll ask you one question, uh, examiner will ask you, what are the points in favor of acute appendicitis? Why did you say it is acute appendicitis? Sir, there is morphis triad. Uh, okay, good. Uh, morphis triad. Instead of telling the examiner morphis triad or which was triad, you can tell, sir, yes, sir. Uh, patient is having typical uh, symptoms of appendicitis like uh, abdomen pain in the right iliac fossa. Uh, and second thing is uh, having vomiting also. Third thing is she's having fever. And this a uh, uh, tenderness was elicited on deep palpation in the right iliac fossa. Okay. All these points in favor of appendicitis, you can mention. So I thought this is a case of acute appendicitis. Then the example will say, very good, Ravi. So what yes, is your sir. plan of management? See, question is clear. What's the plan of yes, management? Sir. sir, after USC finding, uh, we will... So you, we then you will, tell, you will tell, yes, sir, sir, I want to confirm my diagnosis. I am just yes, clinically diagnosed it to be acute appendicitis. I want to confirm it. How will you confirm? Uh, initially with the basic, basic line investigation, sir. Investigation. Uh, I want to uh, do some investigations and confirm the diagnosis. Yes, For which yes, I want to do, which in a first investigation to confirm, first one, which one I will do? Sir, in higher center, we can do CECT. But, no, uh, no, in no, low no. Please don't say that. Higher or okay, lower, sir. you never directly do. See, although CECT is the gold standard, I agree. But you never yes, do. Sir. Even any radiologist also will never do directly CT without doing USG. Okay, sir. First thing sir. is always USG. USG. Okay. Okay, sir. If the X-ray is indicated, okay. first is X-ray. For chest and all, uh, we know CT is best. HRCT is best for the chest. Even then, first we do X-ray. 
then only we do ct like that okay so many things are there i'll tell you later so first you'll do usg so what the findings will be there in usg in a case of appendicitis uh, sir we can uh, see the position of appendix very good and uh, and fluid level okay and what is the most common uh, position in appendicitis retricycle sir second common second common no common preliminal so pelvic almost 75% pelvic. is uh, retro 75 uh, retro cycle and almost 20% is pelvic okay good okay sir. next what other things you will see in pro how will you how will you describe the appendix in case of usg very important for even undergraduates what on the basis of elliptical junction sir features of characteristic usg feature of appendicitis a peristaltic tibular structure that's very important a peristaltic tibular structure measuring about 6 to 8 uh, cm and thickness wall thickness more than 2 mm or 3 mm increased wall thickness edematous that's more important okay a peristaltic tibular blind loop or uh, sometimes they will also mention about the obstruction also there is also fecolith or some obstruction at the luminal end uh, then uh, we will manage conservatively sir no 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 still there are some investigations to uh, yes sir before of uh, we have to do the cvc and okay. we have to what do you get for... in cvc there will be lymphocytosis sir leukocytosis very good yes sir what is modified alvedo please uh, homework for all of you what is yes, modified sir. alvedo scoring Yes, sir. Uh, can I see, sir? You know, you know it. I know. That's why I gave for others. Can yeah, you please, sir? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, mental scoring is there, sir. In mental okay. scoring, there is there is uh, two uh, uh, three exam. Uh, three. What is M? What is A? What is N? Y means migrating pain. A means anorexia. R means uh, rebound tenderness. Sorry. Uh, nausea. Mental. Uh, okay. Nausea Which one? And... Question will be. they just twist the question and give you in a neat entrance exam or pg entrance exam which two co components of modified alvedo scores has two points rebound tenderness and uh, usc no usc you mean to say leukocytosis yes sir leukocytosis okay so we'll read about the modified alvedo scoring okay so after that you okay confirm in the blood investigations also infection is the inflammation is there and in the usg also it is there then you will do some investigation which may be required for the uh, surgery okay like uh, chest x ray uh, is uh, okay and uh, other coagulation profile uh, blood sugar levels okay and uh, urine test ecg is not required here a uh, 28 year old unless she some having some symptoms or auscultate some findings is there ecg is not routinely advocated in all the patients okay before giving general anesthesia rft lft is indicated so after that what are you planning conservative management ravi you are a surgeon man yes surgeon. sir <laughs> huh? yes sir yes okay conservative yes, management okay what will you do conservatively sir uh, need for oral for 24 to 48 hours mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, nasogastric decompression we will do and uh, we will uh, proceed with the drugs and drugs we can give uh, pain management li like analgesic antibiotic to co uh, co cover gram positive gram negative yes sir how will you give the antibiotics what antibiotics you will give uh, sir metronidazole and ceftriaxone why why that ceftriaxone or metronidazole how do you know So to cover the gram positive gram negative in anaerobic bacteria we keep i may be resistant to ceftriaxone my my uh, uh, organisms may be resistant so always better to tell after doing culture and sensitivity okay yes, so beginning as a you will take a, if you are managing conservatively or before doing any, giving any antibiotics to take a blood culture okay blood culture and you uh, send it for culture and sensitivity in that organisms will be isolated along with that you will get the a uh, sensitivity report also this or e, e coli or klebsiella resistant to this 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 and uh, uh, sensitive to this 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 antibiotics initially after giving the sample for blood culture you will start on empirical antibiotics like you said 
which will cover both anti sorry, gram negative and also uh, anaerobes okay metronidazole etc you will start empirically then looking at the sensitivity report you will give the specific antibiotics clear okay yes sir okay then, okay, then. then we have to give iv fluid sir okay all the yeah, done now uh, mm. two days uh, my pain is subsided and uh, fever has been subsided everything is okay yes, next what you do uh if uh, there is uh, we have to look for uh, we have to do for uh, we have to look for either there is abscess or something else if not then we will operate the case and we will do appendectomy when when you will do when you want to do appendectomy uh, appendectomy sir if there is appendicular lump then we will uh, do after uh, six week uh, lump is not there okay sir if there is no lump then see okay good yes. okay for your level your understanding is okay i agree ravi in appendix appendicitis yeah there is a role for conservative management okay but until the cause is not treated it will be there will be recurrence of appendicitis recurrently they will be having the same so always it's wise with our experience we have found that it's wise to go for emergent immediate appendicectomy unless there is a like you said mass is formed there is a, only in case of appendicular mass form okay then because they come late sometimes after three four days they present to you by that time there will be already mass would have been formed by omentum and nearby structures all would have been gathered and could have formed a mass then there is a role of conservative management and then you do interval appendicectomy after six weeks clear in simple yes, appendicectomy is without mass or any phlegmon or any abscess we do immediately uh, optimize the patient if the dehydration or anything is there optimize the patient first and immediately do the appendicectomy why because uh, it might form fecal fistula and some complication might be there so to prevent yeah, complication we do yes if the appendix is blocked it's already blocked and high pressure is there inside if it get ruptured and if it bursts open then it will have high complications okay a high rate of complications like said fecal fistula will be there and the generalized peritonitis and fecal peritonitis everything can cause why you want to take a risk what is the problem if you remove the appendix you are not losing anything anyway so it's always wise to go for appendicite appendicectomy immediately in case of there's a difference in case of cholecystitis you do interval cholecystectomy after one or two months okay but in uh, you don't do in acute setup you don't do cholecystectomy there is an appendicectomy you do immediately why you know high chance of perforation or okay bursting up it's more especially this age group is fine 30 40 in children and elderly age group you have to operate if there is appendicitis tell me why Uh, in uh, adult there might be lax abdominal wall in children very good elderly uh, there will be lax abdominal wall so pointing is not there okay localization will be hampered and even the uh, uh, second immunity is low in such elderly people so there will be no such localization of the pain so it may uh, there is chance of uh, okay complications another thing is or omentum may be atrophy elderly people omentum might have been atrophy So again, there will be no localization or uh, uh, this uh, uh, mass formation may not be there. So in elderly, what about children? And children, uh, same thing, sir. Momentum is not developed well, hmm. and again, immunity also low compared to uh, yes, sir. Immunity okay. also also will low. High chance of complications there. Okay, good. Next, so you always in appendicitis. What if they first ask you? You better go for operation only in appendicitis. Okay. Uh, what is Oshner Sherin's regimen? Oshner Sherin regimen, sir, and that is to for if there is abdom abdominal or uh, sorry appendix appendicular lump, and uh, in Oshner Sherin regimen we have uh, nail power. We have to keep the patient for nail power oral. Uh, we have to do naso nas naso gastric decompression. In drug we have to keep antibiotic, uh, analgesic, IV fluid, and uh, we have to monitor the patient. Very with uh, vitals and after six weeks we will operate the case very good 
what if it is a uh, abscess formed appendicular abscess is there what you will do yes sir sir i will do uh, i will i have to drain the uh, abscess retroperitoneally not retroperitoneally extra peritoneal yes sir yes sir extra peritoneal yes sir hmm. so you will under then ct I... guided or us guided drainage of the uh, uh, abscess you will do okay extra peritoneal drainage of the abscess you will do and after 3 uh, months in case of abscess after 3 months you will do the interval appendicectomy is it clear okay yes, and you will do other the antibodies everything like a conservative management once the abscess is subsided on the inflammation subsided then you will do for uh, what is it uh, interval appendicectomy so what if no uh, so what operation you will do you want to do in this case i say ravi mr ravi you please go go ahead with the operation i say so what will what operation you will do and how you will do sir uh, process sir a process of operation or yeah, i will do op- operation yes sir i will do appendic appendectomy ha uh-huh. what kind of appendectomy you want to do uh, this uh, young sir. young lady yes sir i will do a laparoscopic appendectomy yeah that depending on the your uh, center where you are working yes sir in your uh, okay uh, where are you are you are in ucms routinely what they do there that you should answer okay if they are doing laparoscopic facilities are there then you can answer sir uh, we will go with the go to laparoscopic appendicectomy if not you can also answer open appendicectomy okay that's fine yes, sir. but you should know both the procedures uh, for even after undergraduates you should know both laparoscopic how they do what they do and uh, uh, open can you please uh, tell me briefly about open appendicectomy important yes step. sir uh, what yes, the implication so we have three type of incision mainly mm. uh, they are uh, um, magborne incision mm-hmm. lens incision rutherford incision uh, so initially we will incise the skin and uh, and we we will find two fascia and we will incise mm. two fascia then uh, we will have three abdominal muscles uh, component of rectus rectus abdominis they are external oblique muscles and uh, internal oblique muscles and fascia trans Uh, transversalis abdominis muscle and Very we good. have to split this muscle in with the uh, muscle uh, fiber we have to approach the peritoneum and Very we good. have to stripe the peritoneum and we have to incise the peritoneum then with the uh, then after reaching the uh, abdominal content then we have to look for elliptical junction and if we find the elliptical junction then we can find the cecum with the help of tinea coli after finding tinea coli we can Uh, find the position of appendix uh, after finding the position of appendix uh, we have to hold the appendix with the help of back pops for shape and uh, at the base we have to use active for shape and then uh, with this uh, we can cut the base and first i will i will uh, suture the base sir okay and then after that i will uh, inside uh, i will inside the what? I get the abdo, uh, appendix and then I will no meso appendix first because artery will be yes, there sir. no meso appendix yes, artery sir. will Actually. be there yes sir that you have to ligate first separate the meso appendix and ligate the uh, appendicular artery okay then only we can crush the appendicular base and uh, cut it okay so you have to uh, do the transfixation at the base or uh, just uh, tie it tie at the base and then you can uh, cut the uh, appendix and remove the appendix okay careful well remove your base you will be contaminated so just uh, yes, wash there with some uh, antiseptic solution not to spread the this thing and make sure that you remove the fecal leak okay or sometimes and uh, you have left only minimum length of the base the stump otherwise there will be something called stump appendicitis if you remove yes, uh, leave a long uh, stump again there can be uh, recurrent appendicitis in that stump also and there are so many conditions yeah you have explained very well like as if you are only done the surgery you have seen appendicitis exectomy yes sir okay yes good. sir i have seen in my central yes yes ms so there are so many other conditions after exploring you will find appendix to be totally normal and uh, for utter surprise there may be meckel's diverticulum okay or uh, uh, sometimes what gangrenous appendicitis uh, it will be there or the base would have been perforated involving the cecal wall okay there are so many conditions uh, which are not for discussion today okay sir uh, uh, for uh, okay postgraduates also 
will discuss what are the possible complications after the operation uh, so there might be formation of fistula and uh, and surgical site infection might be there adhesion might be there very good and uh, there might be uh, immediately what will be there after one day patient is having yes. full uh, tachycardia and uh, severe pain and uh, uh, paler uh, everything means uh, there might be perforated sir not perforated you had ligated something what is that yes sir very careful so that uh, appendicular artery you have ligated no yes sir hemorrhage might be there yeah that uh, bleeding will be there very common then anything else right there might and be what is after, after removing the appendix what you will do then uh, we have to send it for culture sir and we have to look very good that most of the students miss it we'll send it for yeah, biopsy biopsy yes, so probably biopsy you should find out sometimes there will be incidental omas incidentally it may be carcinoid tumor or sometimes even the uh, ca or some other things okay so always anything anything is a rule for all of us anything you remove from the body you should send it for biopsy clear in our yes, we'll promise today in our career whatever operations we do whatever we remove from the body we'll send it for biopsy how much or sure we are with our clinically we'll send it for confirmation with biopsy clear yes sir okay after that you will close the abdomen in the layers if you have some contamination is there you will uh, keep a drain if you want or if it's a very clean cut case then no need to keep any drains and you will close the all the layers and then uh, under what anesthesia you will do the operation anesthesia uh... We, we we can give regional anesthesia sir general or regional anesthesia general anesthesia is better always okay general anesthesia is for okay, appendectomy general anesthesia is better okay and uh, sometimes you can do with the uh, higher up spinal anesthesia also if you are very sure that it's appendix only it's not a uh, uh, burst or it's not perforated then you can do with spinal anesthesia uh, not to take any risk you can uh, do with the uh, general anesthesia because sometimes after opening up you will not find the appendix you have to move like i told you appendix may be some uh, higher up on uh, the subhepatic or if there is a burst appendix contamination in the abdomen then it's always general anesthesia is better for laparoscopic always general anesthesia is it clear if you are doing yes, laparoscopic or uh, uh, appendectomy always general anesthesia is preferred very good and after that uh, okay patient is post operatively uh, you will monitor the patient you will give all the antibiotics everything and the post you will uh, get uh, discharged once is okay three four and uh, after seven days you will remove the sutures and all and uh, uh, biopsy report comes okay biopsy report comes as acute uh, inflammatory process involving the appendix it is acute appendicitis you are confirmed so what the extra precautions you will tell the patient now the follow up mm. and there might be recurrent uh, appendicitis might be there so mm. if the same symptom come over there uh, then mm. you have to follow up the surgeon mm. and and to take uh, care of the wound as well mm. sometimes the wound itself might wound, get yeah. infected yeah. Yes, what sir. can happen in the long run she's a very young lady any incision yes, you give there is a high chance like there are chance of getting incisional hernias yes sir okay that you should be okay so not to bear the weights in the immediate post operative period you will counsel the patient not to bear the weights at least for 3 to 6 months okay not to lift the heavy objects not to bend too much not to exert too much of pressure on that wound site these are all the common precautions patients should, should take okay in the post operative period okay so uh, what one more homework for all of you i am seeing so many enthusiastic uh, uh, participants i am giving one more homework it's not there in any books but uh, what is lily white operation in appendix what is lily white or white lily the same lily white operation in appendicitis uh, yeah uh, we start first of all i would like to say that i am a very avid viewer and follower of the uh, white army you know since one of my friend recommended the channel i've been following it and it's so brilliant i would like to say congratulations and thank you to all of 
all the you know amazing working team out there who is who has made it you know free uh, so that we can access it anytime we have confusion regarding any topic and uh, the gray medicos was started with a, a similar idea actually uh, we were since the corona virus pandemic has affected each and everybody all the nation worldwide and it took a heavy toll on our studies as yeah. well so yeah. this year uh, you know being in the uh, clinical year uh, but still we didn't have that much or uh, you know hospital exposure and we were just taking That's online classes we were sitting part. out there yeah <laughs> we were very bored so uh, actually robby came up with this idea that why not you know even this zoom and all platform existed already but we were not familiar with it so uh, once the online classes started so that thought came across our mind so why not you utilize this platform and you know create a, a network of people where we can connect where we can learn together so that's how gray medicos concept was started and uh, what's exactly gray medicos achal uh, what was the question what exactly gray medical symbolize okay gray i think um, yeah this the basic idea i have already explained and then we were thinking of a suitable name then somebody suggested that as medical students we are somewhere between black and white so black stands for knowing nothing and white stands for knowing something so it is just a transition uh, from knowing nothing to knowing something so that's why the gray medicos name was Problem. given so hello and namaste everyone from the gray medicos Hope you all are doing well. We are currently facing a pandemic and amidst the tough and unproductive times, we, the medical students from different medical colleges of Nepal, have created a platform where we can learn and grow together as medical students. Gray is the color that symbolizes the transition between black and white. From knowing nothing, we are at the transition to knowing something. hence we have chosen the name the gray medicos the gray medicos organizes interactive teacher student sessions guiding novice medical students to the clinical approach to various diseases our sessions main aim is to make medical students learn the art of history taking to reach a proper clinical diagnosis We explore the boundless world of medical sciences through a student's eye and try to provide the learners with a clear basic concept and explain the simple reasons behind every clinical step. These guided sessions also prepares us for those questions which are asked in our viva and furthermore other limitless questions that can arise anytime during our clinical practices. We believe our sessions can establish a bond between the learners and the presenters and also encourage our learners to come forward and step up for presenting on various topics as it will open doors to limitless benefits. So, join us in studying together as a team and help us to raise this platform to the next level. Journey to be the better doctors, the gray medicos. Thank you very much. I want to join. So Ravi, I want to join. What to do? <laughs> you can join, sir. Easy. Huh? Uh, no, what is the anyone? If anyone wants to willing to join after seeing the session or anything, how can they join? Sir, through the Facebook page, by we are by word page as well, sir. And through YouTube also, we can join. What we we'll do is you send me all the links. I'll put uh, yes, them in the, the description of this video. Okay, sir. The YouTube. For okay, in this video we'll put it, and for the session also, whenever we'll be having the sessions, I'll put all those links in our uh, YouTube video description. So whoever sees that can uh, click the link and join that. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. So, sir, so we the have few members also can become the gray uh, 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 <laughs> like, uh, members. Okay. Yes, sir. Sir. Gray sir. What are your what are say... future uh, uh, plans? Uh, yes, sir. We are. Uh, planning to have a panel discussion and so to introduce new plan i would like to request sushil dakal to say few things yeah please hi mr sushil sir <clears throat> namaste sir i am sushil dakal third year mbbs student from universal yeah. college of medical sciences and program director of gray medicos 
It was I would like to thank White Army for collaborating us with the Grey Medical Sir. Yeah. Yes, uh, Achal has already says, said color, the color gray is the transition between black and white. We medical students are in the transition of knowing something to knowing a lot of things. So we medical students from all over Nepal have started this platform, sir, to conduct an interactive teacher student session and strengthen our clinical knowledge. I would also like to express my sincere thanks to you, sir, Dr. Kishan Rao, sir, founder of White Army. It's our um, honor to be in this program, sir, and uh, founder, Ravi Basial, founder of Grey Medicals, presenter of today's program. We hope this collaboration will remain in coming future, sir, in panel discussion. Um, we'll be representing our mentor from Nepal and from India as well. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, we are, we are conducting a weekly session about uh, presentation, and we are also uh, coming with the new program, sir, about the medical diaries. In these medical diaries, we will be inviting a guest, um, uh, and we will be discussing about their life uh, at MBBS, UG level or PG level, and all their memories, struggle, um, medical diaries. happiness. Nice. Yes, sir, nice. medical diaries. Okay. Uh, so, O'Neill is a fourth year student. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. And good afternoon to everyone presenters. So it was a wonderful presentation by Mr. Ravi. It was really enlightening. And as you said, sir, like I am my myself, I'm from Siliguri, which is very close to Nepal. Oh. So yeah, so I, so as you said, like the innocence of Nepalis and also like I have experienced it firsthand since most of my friends are Nepalese. Okay, okay. So and uh, so as you very clearly pointed out. Us. With the Nepal, you will be the mediator next time. Um, yeah, I'll include you also for the next session. Okay, sure, so sir. You can it would be my Nepal honor. Level. Yeah, yeah. And sure, as you sure. said, sir, nowadays there is nothing called like national boundaries for no, medical no, education. No. No, no, yes, sir. We are all you moving towards an international uh, united. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because and, after uh, all, the human body is the same, and we yeah, all should yeah. have a standard medical education throughout. So it will help us to learn from them and them to help from us. Exactly. Uh, thank you, sirs. <laughs> it, it's great honor and privilege to share platform with the Great Army. Uh, we would love to work as a team. It was a great presentation. You describe each and every detail about the case, and it was very informative session. Uh, thank you, Ravi. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. The concluding remarks from the founder, Ravi. Sir, firstly, again, I want to thank you, sir, for giving me all the opportunity. Sir, I think I am feeling the same positivity from you, sir. Uh, initially, uh, it was difficult for all, all of us to start with this concept, but we stand and we did here. And we will, as you may have already mentioned, that we doesn't come for our name or something else. We spread positivity and we have to uh, learn day by day 